Alright, hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be doing a uh, Bergen kit uh, explosion for you, showing you all the kit that you should keep in your Bergen and some other stuff that I have as well. Um, obviously, the first thing you'll notice is my name, squadron number there, uh, very important so you can identify your Bergen straight away. I've also got it on the back so you can see it from pretty much any angle. Also, on each detachable pouch, okay, so you don't want to lose any kit. So what we'll do is we'll start on each pouch and then we'll go inside it as well. So at the top here, I've got just a roll of sniper tape, or at least what's left of it, because I tend to use a lot of that stuff, which isn't very good. That's all I keep in this pouch. I know some people keep waterproofs, but I'll keep them somewhere else. Uh, in fact, moving on to this, this uh, pocket pouch on the side here, I keep my waterproofs and there is my trousers as well as my uh, shirt and a shemag in a uh, ziplock bag just because if that's wet and I'm going to be putting it in there later on I don't want to get my shemag wet as well so I prefer to have warm dry kit so keep that in there. I also normally would have uh, my Buffalo Special 6 shirt in there at the top or uh, in the middle somewhere. But at the moment it's uh, outside because I've been using it. On this rocket pouch here now, I have all my basher equipment. Uh, in fact, the first thing you'll notice uh, is I've got the extendable basher poles. And I'd, uh, if need to, i just take them out. They help support your basher a lot more if the uh, surrounding vegetation isn't very good. So you've got your basher. Oh. <laughs> That's what I keep in my basher as well is four green bungees and the ten pegs taped together again with some tape. Uh, purely because putting them in a bag or somewhere is just another thing to get to. But with this you can pretty much take them straight out like that and fit them back in or if the tape wears out you can just uh, take some more so from the basher some fake paracord I need to get some green stuff but at the moment that's what I've got some uh, more cordage and uh, two bin bags for disposing of any um, you know, litter that might be in your harbour area uh, and that's it in this pouch. In this one now, I keep my water bottle, an extra one. And again, yeah, I've done the uh, carry handle so I can easily take it out. It's an American style water bottle. Cut. And I've got some of the Lucasade drinks taped together. And this isn't for me, this is so when we're going up hills and stuff, maybe in Salisbury, and cadets start, you know, passing out or whatever, hopefully not. But uh, obviously fitness levels might not be very good. All I could do is rip the top off that, pour it in a cup, or uh, if they've annoyed me, I'll just make them drink it or eat it. Uh, just powder. As long as it replaces the electrolytes and gets it into the system uh, so they don't, you know, they've got enough energy anyway. I sort of keep in that pouch. Now moving inside. Again, all your loose ends are taped up with uh, sniper tape or electrical tape or anything. In the lid, you'll notice I have my Northern Ireland patrol pack. And this is my main day sack that I'll use most of the time. You'll see in my webbing I've put some clips in. That's for if I want to attach this one or that one. But this is my uh, main day sack that I'll put kit from here into and just carry that with my uh, Bergen. Um, but I'll just quickly show you that in detail. So that folds out like this. You'll see the lid could go down. And all I do is just compact it so it fits in the lid of the Bergen. And it's very easy to get to. Then you've got your compression uh, pull cords or whatever. Now, a lot of people or just throw the kit in their Bergen, which is okay, you know, if uh, in the middle of the night you've been bumped and you need to exfil pretty quickly. 
but when you first pack it you really want to make sure your kit's sorted out and everything and squared away. So what I do is I keep a uh, dry bag in here. Obviously it's not a super efficient dry bag, it's more of just a compression sack because that's not watertight but it's still useful and I keep all my kit in there and uh, for stuff like my sleeping bag and my clothes I keep uh, proper compression bags. So I've got my um, wash kit which consists of you know uh, wet wipes and paracetamol, um, talcum powder for your feet, armpits and uh, other areas, shaving equipment, tooth, teeth cleaning equipment and uh, yeah pretty much everything that you'll find, a little flannel as well, everything that you'll find in a regular wash kit. Next is this yellow bag. Unfortunately some like it is pretty you know, offensive colours, but it's the cheapest house, so I thought I'd just keep it in there. And uh, inside, I keep spare clothes, you know, spare CS95s, spare underwear and socks. One thing I will show you from here is what I do with my socks, which does look a little bit daft, however, it's very useful, is I take the main thick socks that you'd normally wear, get them together, elastic band them, as well as this plastic bag and some thin socks as well and also some uh, small uh, doggy bags or something and the reason why is if your feet do get wet for whatever reason uh, and your boots are absolutely soaking wet what you should do is put your socks on put these little plastic black bin bags around your feet and then put them in your um, boots and it stops your wet boots getting into your nice dry socks and then you have sopping feet all day and the other reason for this little plastic bag is if your socks do get wet put them in there so it doesn't get the rest of them wet as well uh, so that's just you know socks are a pretty big thing just don't want your feet to start getting blisters and everything next again is a bright yellow bag. This is proper dry bag, and in here I keep my uh, Nanak. Yeah, my Nanak minus five sleeping bag, which I've had for ages. It hasn't always been the best sleeping bag at times because I do wake up sometimes pretty cold. What I've done is I have uh, included a sleeping bag liner. I think it was not a silk one, but it's a pretty top notch one. Paid fifty quid for it and I'll just keep it inside the sleeping bag and pack it all the way in the, this compression sack. So with a liner the idea is there's an extra layer for your body to trap uh, the air and uh, warm it so it'll be a lot warmer. I haven't tried it yet but that's my next challenge. You'll notice so far you haven't seen a roll mat on the outside and that is because I keep my roll mat on the inside of the Bergen and what I do is I take it Roll it up as tight as possibly possible. And obviously you only have the green side showing. So you take your roll mat, whack it in there, and then you start to unravel it so it's as wide as possible. And then you put all your stuff like your sleeping bag and everything inside the uh, roll mat because what it does is it can protect your kit uh, so, you know if you just throw in your kit off uh, six tonners or whatever you've got some means of protection also it means your roll mat doesn't get soaking wet because no one likes sleeping on a soaking wet roll mat anyway <clears throat> but that's it that's all the kit that I keep in my burden I uh, hope this has been useful for you guys um, and also the way that I pack it as well. If you need any, uh, you know, advice or anything, drop a comment or something. Or if you want to just discuss what the kit I keep, again, drop a comment. Um, be sure to like or favourite this video. And yeah, I'll see you next time, guys.